the number of LEDs in a car these days can range from the hundreds to the thousands. Did you see the car that set the Guinness World Record with 43,860 LED lights? That car was super cool. Today, automotive LEDs can do a lot of cool stuff. And in order for the lights in your next automotive application to have all of those fancy features, you're going to need a robust LED driver. And yes, my friends, that's in fact what we're talking about today. <laughs> Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. In this episode of Chalk Talk, Catherine Scott from Rome Semiconductor and I explore automotive LED driver applications and how Rome Semiconductor is driving innovation in this arena. We also investigate the animated lighting and limp home modes of Rome's BD18333 EUV 24 channel automotive LED driver and how you can use these solutions in your next automotive design. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from Rome Semiconductor. Hi, Catherine. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. We're chatting all about automotive LED drivers today. So, Catherine, can you set the stage for us? Can you walk us through a typical application and where Rome fits in there? Yeah. So, here's a diagram of all the necessary blocks involved in making a car taillight. And I want to note that the block diagram for a headlight looks very similar. So starting from the car battery on the left, we'll need some kind of front end protection and power management, which is usually handled on a separate board. And we'll call this a lighting module. Communication is handled from the body control module and sent to the lighting module, which is then passed down to the tail light itself. Uh, everything shown here in dark blue is a component that Rome supplies. And Rome has a very strong portfolio for automotive lighting and is actually capable of supplying almost every IC in the lighting module and tail light. So the purpose of today's slide deck is really to highlight Rome's multi-channel current sync LED driver, which is used in lamps both with and without animation. This video here is an example of an animated rear light in action. For the most part, we see animated lighting in sequential turn signals, but we're seeing more and more luxury vehicles use animated lighting in welcome animations and sometimes even in hidden Easter eggs. That's fun. So, Catherine, when it comes to these exterior lamps, what kind of drivers does Rome offer? Yeah, so BD18333 is a linear current sync LED driver, which means the constant voltage supply is coming from another device, typically a buck or a buck boost converter running off of a car battery input. And this kind of architecture is best suited for applications where you need to control a large number of LEDs at a low string current typically less than 125 milliamps, which is the maximum capability for this part. And if you want to drive a small number of LEDs, say one to three LEDs, our portfolio also has linear drivers that can source up to half an amp. And for higher current applications, we do have constant current switching converters that run off car battery input, either with integrated FETs if you need a more compact and EMC-friendly solution, or with external confets if you need something that's more customizable for a higher power application. All right, so Catherine, can we take a closer look at the BD18333? What kind of specifications are we talking about with this solution? Sure, so the BD18333 is a 24-channel current sync and features individual dimming control for each channel. And this can be either DC dimming or PWM dimming. Each channel is rated up to 125 milliamps, and that's based on the internal capability of the FET. You can even combine channels if you need higher current. For example, if you tie two channels together, that would give you a maximum rating of 250 milliamp string current. Another thing to note, this device also uses a UART interface with a maximum one megabit per second baud rate, and you can have up to 16 devices on the same bus. This part is ISO 26262 compliant to support an ASL B rating system and integrates several protection features such as LED short and open detection under voltage lockout, thermal shutdown, and a limp home mode, which tells the device how to operate in case you lose that UR communication. 
and I have a few more details on this in a later slide. And then another thing to note is that while it can report faults through an internal register, it also has an external fault pin, which I do go into more detail on in the next slide. So this is a good look at the pins and internal box of the part. You can see the fault pin there, which is an open drain. Above it are the outputs of the 5 volt and 3.3 volt supplies, which are generated from internal LDOs and provide power to the internal circuitry. If we go down a little bit, you can see the pins CS0 to CS3. These pins, you can use external resistors to set the device address. So four bits allow for 16 individual device addresses. And then if you look on the right-hand side, we have the external current setting pins for, uh, we call them XC set one and XC set two. So XC set one configures the default LED string current. And then XC set two determines what that LED current is going to be in case the device loses communication and enters that limp home mode I had referenced earlier. And then the bottom pins, PWM in, PWM out, are used to synchronize across multiple drivers. And the next slide, I illustrate how that works. Okay, so let's talk about that PWM phase setting. Let's take a closer look at this aspect. Sure. So this feature allows a leader device to synchronize its internal clock with downstream follower devices. Whether a part is a leader or a follower is configured through the internal sync set register. From here, the leader device generates a 488 hertz reference signal out through the PWM out pin that the other follower devices can then use to adjust their internal clock. And this just allows for greater precision in the timing of your lighting animations. So in the figure above, the leader IC generates a reference signal through PWM out. Device number two receives it through PWM in, processes the signal to adjust its own internal oscillator, and then passes it down to device number three and so on. So Catherine, can we also look at an animated lighting aspect of this solution as well? Yeah, Here's an example block diagram that features multiple BD1A333 devices across different boards showing control for the left, the right, and the center rear lamps. On each board, we're making use of the PWM synchronization feature for more accurate timing. And since you can have up to 16 different device addresses and each device has 24 channels, this means you can control up to 384 LED segments on one bus. So, Catherine, you also talked about limp home mode earlier. So what exactly is that? Can you talk about that a bit? BD18333 has a limp home function, which is basically what it sounds like. If communication to the part is lost, this part defaults to the limp home setting, which uses that external resistor, XD set 2, to determine what the LED dimming setting should be, which ensures some kind of lighting until the driver can get home or to an auto shop and then repair the issue. And this setting will vary depending on what the car manufacturer demands. And in some cases, that car manufacturer wants no lighting at all in limp home mode, in which case you wouldn't have lighting and would be very obvious that your taillight or your headlight needs to be replaced. If you do need that setting, in which case there is no lighting, that external resistor on the XD set 2 pin just simply isn't populated at all. So, Catherine, ASIL B ratings also require a variety of protection settings as well, right? What does this solution include here? This is a good summary of the protection features that contribute to the parts ASIL B rating. It's a table that can be found in the parts data sheet. But to go through them really quick, this part features under voltage lockout with hysteresis, thermal shutdown above 175 junction temperature Celsius, also with a hysteresis of 25 degrees. If the junction temperature hits above 125 Celsius, the part has a thermal shutdown warning. As far as protection features go, it also has LED open and short protection, CRC error, a UART watchdog, and I set pin short detection. In the case that that pin is shorted to ground, the part will issue a fault flag. And then each of these protection features have a different status register to indicate the fault, but any fault is also conveyed through device's external fault pin. And on the right-hand column, you'll see an indication if this protection feature can be detected while the device is in limp home mode. All right, so watchdog timers are also a crucial component of these ASIL systems. So can we also look at that aspect of this solution? Yes, this is a pretty standard watchdog timer. 
but we do get a lot of questions on this, so I wanted to review this feature. It's often a must-have feature in ASL systems. The watchdog will monitor the RX pin for UART commands, and if no communication is detected after 100 milliseconds, both an error status register and the fail B pin are toggled. Before we go, Catherine, can you recap your main points for me? Sure. So to summarize, the BD18333 enables animated lighting and the individual control of up to 384 LED segments when using the maximum 16 devices on one bus. It is capable of both PWM and DC dimming control, has PWM synchronization for precision and animation, and is ASLB compliant, featuring a limp home mode and several other production features. You can find the data sheet on our website in addition to an application note that will take you step by step through the design process. Fantastic. Well, Catherine, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from Rome Semiconductor. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talk section of EE Journal. You can't miss it, it's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash EE.